going on, everybody? I'd like to uh, introduce everybody. We are known as the Hamilton Hype Boys. I'm Brian. This is Brandon, and this is Tyler. So just to give an introduction to everybody. And I don't um, know him, so I'm just putting <laughs> him in. Uh, anyway, just to give you an introduction, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing predictions, reviews for ma mainly independent wrestling shows here all over Ontario. Sometimes we may discuss more of the major brands like AEW, Impact, etc., etc. But as the channel comes along, we'll go further along. This is going to be our first review show. Don't, don't forget, we also will be doing like opinion videos. Yep. You know, like stuff that like you know, like these guys haven't seen. You know, like they know Ethan Page by all ego, but I know him as the motion picture. Yeah. And right? yeah, we also we also are going to have videos in the future where we're going to be discussing certain topics. Uh, me and Brandon talked about this uh, off camera, but in the future, we're also going to give our own opinion on wrestling as a whole in general. Uh, and but, you know what? And if there's something that like none of us saw, like like Tyler, he goes to a lot of super kick, he goes to a lot of smash. Me and Brian might not be able to get out too much of them, yeah, but so, Tyler can yeah. go. So Tyler can, you know, we meet up and Tyler can give us a go down of like what happened. Yeah, so you know? basically, yeah, so basically we're all going to contribute in some way, some form. At a show somewhere in Southern Ontario. Yeah, yeah. So the first review we're going to do is for Church Pro Wrestling's Holy Grail All Women's Tournament. Now this took place last Shout out Sunday. To Kyle. Do well soon. <laughs> yeah, shout out to uh, that Kyle. Do well so, soon. Yeah, well soon. Uh, this this took place last Sunday. Featured all female talent. So we're gonna go over the results. So the pre-show match featured Bronte Legend versus Ricky Stardust, and we saw Ricky Stardust go over the mayor, Bronte Legend. What is your opinion of this guy? Since Tyler's kind of the new guy, so let's see. <laughs> well, uh, the match was actually quite in interesting. Um, both guys did a phenomenal job. Would love to see this uh, feud continue, possibly. As at the end of the match, I believe uh, people are chanting out "New Mayor" with Ricky, so it could be something interesting that they might want to do here, say, election season. Okay. All right, I like that idea. I mean, we could also have um, match, you know, Mare's right on full match, just saying, you know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> bad, bad boat selection. <laughs> okay, Mr. Russo, I get it. Yeah, Brandon, what's your opinion? No, it, it was a good match, you know. From top to bottom, it was good. Like, Ronzi Legend, he is, he's a legend. Yeah, and he is the mayor of Pro Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Ricky Stardust, like, again, he's I go back to him from Unit 13. You know, like, he wasn't even a wrestler when I still saw him. He was the GM. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. If, you ever, if you ever see Ricky Stardust out in public or at a show, ask him how Danny O is. There you go. Some trivia for you guys there, courtesy of Brandon. Uh, I thought the match was pretty good. Unfortunately, I almost missed it because I was out getting a drink. I didn't realize there's a free show going on until I came back in. Yeah, I but didn't, I, we, we were, I wasn't expecting a free show. No, we, we weren't, just, we we weren't even expecting their shows before we never got a free show. There were a couple uh, times they did, but, not, did they? Uh, but it's usually like at NSW or... Uh, yeah, that's what yeah. we mean. Yeah, uh, usually we don't see too many uh, free shows from Church Bowl Wrestling. But yeah, so that was the opening, well, the free show to the tournament. So yeah. now to get into the actual tournament itself. So mm -hmm. in the first round, we had Anika taking on Gabby Gilbert with Gabby Gilbert going over Anika. Now, this was our opening contest with the best thing. That was pretty good. Cool. You know, Gabby uh, carried the match. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, as you as you guys said, dollar store Carmella. Yes. So, if you've never seen Anika, when she came out, she literally had pretty much spot on to a T of what Carmella would wear. Like the blonde hair, gold outfit. I'm sorry, the only thing that's frightening you is coming in black. Uh, she was just bad. At least with Carmella, she's entertaining and respectful in the ring. Whereas Anika had it all, and you just wish Gabby uh, knocked that weave off her head. Which I'm surprised that I'm trying to not. She must have had it on really tight. Must have. <laughs> really glue. 
<laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. But yeah, let's just say uh, Anika's character, like, this is the character, not the actual person, because I can only base it on the character. But she basically took the worst qualities of Carmella and Lana and fused them together. Yeah, pretty much. Between a bad Russian accent and wearing a jewelry I can find at uh, the Dollarama. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. We can go to Dollarama right now. Probably and get buy exactly, exactly what you see. What you want. Yeah. All right. So we're going on to the next first round matchup. We had CC Moss versus Miss April Jones. And I think we're... <laughs> Tyler, you might as well just start this off. Okay. <laughs> bad, what bad is decision. the fascination with CC? She is land is all no. Like, did she not go to personality school? Because being a heel in wrestling is more than just being a complete bitch. And you are boring. like I believe the only reason she's is popular she is, it's because her last name is Moss. And like, you, like, honestly, for future heels, if you're going to uh, talk, start like drawing back and forth with me, don't say I'm there to come see you, because I will clearly point out that I have not spent my hard-earned money on you. I came to spend my hard-earned money to get your ass, to see your ass get handed to you. And if you end up winning the match and moving forward in the tournament, prepare for me not to be in my seat while your match is going on. Brandon? It, it is good. Like, I just, I kind of, like, kind of agree with Tyler. Like, I would have had, I would have liked Miss Jones to go over. Yeah, I'll have to agree with Brandon because Miss April Jones is actually really, really popular. Yeah. I think, a lot of fans there. And so. I think uh, more fans would have been interested in the later rounds if Miss April Jones made it further than the first round. So, yeah, so so again, CC Moss went over April Jones that time. So, continuing on for our next first round matchup, we have the Crusher versus the Selfie Queen, the Hardcore Hottie, Jesse Mack. I With, think we can uh, shrink down her name to the Hardcore Selfie Mama. Jesse Mack. There you go. There you go. And Mack did go over the pressure via pinfall. So I, I think I got stuck in the eighties. Are I you are you referring? Would you be referring to the pressure? Yes, I think she's stuck in the eighties. I like Jesse Mack. He's oh, good. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that's the same about the crusher. Yeah. yeah, but we all, but we're all familiar with Jesse Mack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, Jesse that, Mack, and that's, and that's another thing too, right? Like, a lot of these people we've seen at other places during other events, right. kind of thing. So, yeah. you know. But if you've never seen Jesse Mack, you've never seen her previous matches. If you're not familiar with her. If this was your first time seeing Jesse Mack, I advise you go back watch some of Jesse's matches. She's actually had some pretty decent yeah, matches. Especially watch some of her hardcore matches. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Like yes. She, she's part. Of, she was part of Death Proof too. Yeah. Right? Yes. Like watch some of her early. Watch some of her Death Proof and Lucha Lucha, uh, Demand Lucha matches. Oh yes. She's had some great matches, especially in Demand Lucha. So moving along to our next first round matchup, we have Valentina Vasquez versus Ryder Furlong. Now. Furlong did, or Valentina Velasquez did defeat uh, Ryder Furlong, however, in a very controversial fashion. Controversial is putting it lightly. You explain to him. Well, everyone knows that follows wrestling that accidents and injuries do happen in the sport, even though it's choreographed, let's say. And when the ref puts up the X, the match should be automatically done in either the match is A, thrown out, or B, the person left standing is your winner. Neither of those things happen. And Ryder Furlong, being a genuine human being that he is, was trying to look after his opponent. That announced to him, what, including the ref who put up the X, which is a sign for stop the match if you have a legit injury. Besides, 
who throw him up and pick up the victory in the most disgraceful act I think I've ever seen in an independent wrestling organization. And honestly, even the major promotions now like WWE, Impact, AEW, ROH are moving away from doing those types of spots. And especially the so and I've never appreciated using something that's meant to be only shown for a severe injury using to get someone heat. And so that disgraces when they do that, they disgrace all women doing wrestlers when they did that. They disgraced all trans wrestlers doing that. They disgraced the industry doing that. And also, because she's known as Latina, he disgraced the memory of Eddie Guerrero doing that. Because even Eddie, during his heel run, the late heel run he had in WWE, did never pull such a move. So, that was honestly the most disrespectful thing. And if Courage Pro, I respect them, I appreciate the shows they put on, but the next match he came out, should like one of their figureheads should have came out and said, No, you're not medically cleared to wrestle. The X was put up. Sorry. But the winner of the previous match was Ryder Furlong and he comes out and wrestles the match. Ryder was my pick to win it all. Yeah. I'll be yeah, I'll be I'll, I'll fully agree with uh, Tyler that that was not a way to win, especially if the X is still up and a lot of people who are you know are familiar with wrestling, when the X is thrown up, it usually indicates a legit serious injury. Yeah, we've seen storyline injuries happen on TV, but using the X in that format, no, it is very disrespectful. I fully agree with you, Tyler. That. And, and that, shouldn't, that should have not been the way for her to win. No. Just a regular roll up pin, fine. Yeah. If it's like Boston, but when the X is thrown up, no. No, that's, it's that's done. The way to go. Match over, done, thing. Winner, Ryder Furlong. And to be honest, I do not cons- I do not believe she deserved to move forward and any results after that should have been thrown out. And I think honestly she should be fine. Well uh, we just gotta move along here. Here. So yeah, that's our uh, little rant there on that match there. So our next first round matchup, we had Akisha Black taking on one of our favorites, Shiloh. And we actually saw Alicia Black beat Shiloh Pia in the fall. Now, this was actually a pretty good match. Oh, solid match. These two put on one hell of a show. I think possibly match of the night for me. Mm-hmm. It was a disappointment not seeing Shiloh move forward because I think, again, having Shiloh go forward instead of some of the other people that they had moved forward, just by name recognition, would have maybe had energized the crowd a little bit further. I, not that this... Uh, credit anyone that performed, but I think having like the well, more well-known names, especially the Ontario wrestling people, would have helped maybe drum interest and maybe made the, big, the final uh, round a little more entertaining and a less predictable. Very good. Very good. Mm-hmm. This hands down was match of the night. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, especially for us very familiar with Shiloh, you have to admit she gave she gave to Akisha Black. I've never seen Shiloh hit so hard in my life after watching. I've only seen like a handful of her matches, but this is probably one of honestly I would say probably one of Shiloh's best matches. Yeah, and take and, it and take it from the ice cream man. Oh yeah, well again, <laughs> low hanging fruit. Oh, I could have said so much worse, but I chose to be. Yeah, Tyler chose to be professional today, at least for now. <laughs> but uh, I feel like sooner or later, Shiloh's going to have a lot more championship belts in Ontario because she is possibly one of the best or the best women's wrestler going in Ontario right now. Right like, she's up right in there. that level with Alexa Nicole. Yes. And I feel like she just needs that one opportunity by any organization, and she will give her a title. She'll run with it. I'll, I'll even do you one better, Tyler. You say Alexa Nicole, I'll go better and say Jody Threat. Yeah, like, if you had to pick 
your top female athletes, Kylie is probably on the top of most people's list. Oh, yeah. And she so was a lot of people's odds-on favorite to win this tournament. Oh, yeah. All right, so moving along here, we actually had a little break in the tournament with an in-ring segment by our CPW Heavyweight Champion, the Blood Countess. Oh, uh, I think Sabrina. we missed a brown. Can we talk about Tyler Perry and versus Raven? Riva? Oh, yes, I do apologize. Yes, yes, we also I'm had... Um, You're fired. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, I'm just... Uh, unfortunately, I've missed that note here. Yes, we also had another... Uh, so, yeah, how memorable the match was... Yep, so we had another match, yeah, so these two have been feuding in CPW for quite some time, yep. but we had Riva taking on Zyla Berry in the first round uh, match. I wouldn't really call it a feud, because they literally fought once, and that, and uh, Riva, oh, twice? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was the second time, yeah, this was the second time, um, but, um, it was like, even when you read the description of the match, CPW, Talk shit about Reva. And honestly, it wasn't until that match where I finally learned what her character's name was because I just always referred to her as the screaming bitch because that's all she freaking did during the entire match. Pretty much, yeah. And I would like to have my hearing by the time I'm in my 40s. Well, luckily for you, Tyler, Zyla Perry went over Reva to move on to the next one. Yes. So thank goodness for that, right? Okay, so now, now we can get to the break of the tournament where we had an in-ring segment with the CPW Heavyweight Champion, the Blood Countess, Sabrina Kyle, inducting a Hamilton wrestling legend, the Anaconda, into the Hamilton Wrestling Hall of Fame. However, during that segment, we saw the return of a person we have not seen in turf for wrestling, let alone Hamilton, in a very long time. We saw the return. Oh, Saint. The myth, the, the myth, myth? The, the legend known as Saint, Saint Stephen Elias made his triumphant return to during the segment. And he was questioning, you know, with such a big tournament, why was he not invited? Exactly, man. Why like, was he not invited? He, he made such a big deal of this event. A legend who's also in this business, Saint Stephen Elias, why was he not invited? And he let his feelings know, and like the saint always says, he speaks the truth, and he spoke yes, a he lot did. of truth yes, during that segment. Yes, he did. But unfortunately, because he was outnumbered two to one, I guess the girls couldn't handle the truth. Nope, and they had to beat him down away just to get him just to chew him off. That's a disrespect to a legend there in the industry. And he was a, a legend too, and he's been in this business. Such a disrespect to a legend. And Brandon knows, even before I was a fan, you know him best as well. Good 13. So hopefully, hopefully this is an indication that we're going to see more of the leader of Saints Row back in CPW. So well, hopefully we're that's all a proud members of. Yes, we are. Okay, so now we're going to get on to the semifinals of this tournament. So the first semifinal match is we had... Valentina Vas Vasquez taking on Zyla Berry. Now, we did have Zyla Berry come over the victory over Vasquez via submission, which, wow, kind of surprised me. I think she won the first round, too, for submission. Was yeah, it a submission? I think she won the whole thing. Oh, my gosh, she won the whole thing. I I yeah, so basically, yeah, so we had Zyla Berry moving on to the finals over Vasquez. So, that was... Interesting match, probably one of the last matches I paid attention to. Yeah, until the next one, yeah. <laughs> no, until the uh, non tender match. Oh, no. Yeah, so basically, you know, again, got another decent match for Tyler Berry moving on to the finals. Moving along, your next semi final matchup CC Moss taking on Jesse Mack. Thank goodness that we had Jesse Mack in this match. Yeah, thank God we had Jesse Mack. But, but unfortunately, unfortunately, Mack had to be lost for this one and CC moving on to the finals. I couldn't tell because I was out getting a beverage. So, 
Yeah, so Tyler, once CC Moss's music hit, stormed out of the room. She didn't hey, if she thought I was there to watch her, she was a big mistake. That's a lesson to all the heels. Don't tell me that I'm there to see you. Because by the end of the day, I'm just going to get up. I don't care. I'll just get up and walk out on your match. But again, just as, as we've said in the first match, Jesse Mack is a great worker. It's unfortunate she has to take the loss to CC. It's unfortunate anyone has to take a loss to CC. Now, moving along to our non tournament special attraction match. Regarding no. our semi final. Oh, sorry. My bad. My bad. Thank you for being here. I would, <laughs> I would probably be lost all over the place. So, our Fire. last. <laughs> Eat. Fire. <laughs> our last semi final match, we saw Akisha Black taking on Gabby Gilbert with the result ending at 8. Now, they said it was a double disqualification. Double disqualification. But it was a but double count. Clearly, it was double, clearly double a double count out. So, yeah. because I don't even think the, I think almost the entire match took outside the ring. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. They once they started outside, they did not stop. Oh, they got in the they ring. They got in the ring for, for the, the bell to go, yeah. and, and then, then they, they went back, back out. out. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, just that's pretty much it. Yeah. It was, uh, that's another double. one that was like what Riders match. It ended weirdly for me. Like. Yeah, it was like. Well, we kind of expected that because. Unfortunately, maybe it was an oversight, but they didn't have an even enough matches in brackets. So I mean, either you would have had a triple threat for their finals, or one of the matches was going to end up in a you know, double DQ, double count up, whatever. I mean, I mean, I mean, maybe this is just like them starting a feud kind of thing. It would like be possible. It would be possible if they if they do both turn two turn four wrestles. We could see this feud in the future. Yeah. So and Gabby is years. a very popular wrestler in she is, yes. Courage Pro. Yes, she is. And she ran a seminar prior to the event. Yes, she did. Hopefully the wrestlers enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And it was so who match was just a weird match to begin with. Because you had a black tied under a tarp as waiting for Gabby to come out and attack him from behind attack her from behind. And Again, it was like they were in the ring just so the bell could ring. They could ring the bell and then they went back out. So yeah. it was like, okay, where's the match? It didn't even really feel like a match. It just felt like a was, two people fighting. Yeah, pretty much more like a brawl. Yeah, I mean, that's re- really in the end, that's kind of what it was. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty much a brawl. That's why Brian might have forgot that was a semi final match. Yeah, because totally, totally slipped my mind. That's probably why, because we were paying attention to the matches where the match. Not for a clear winner, so I forgot about a match that didn't even have one. Or a clear one, anyway. Unprofessional. Unprofessional. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyways, moving along to what I was about to mention with the non special tournament, or sorry, the non tournament special tournament. Oh, jeez, now it's a special tournament. The non. Well, technically it was. It was a yeah. special attraction match. There you go. Now, originally, this was supposed to be. Alice and Kay taking on Pia Moss, but unfortunately, due to travel issues, Alice and Kay was unfortunately not able to make it. However, she, uh, yeah, unfortunately, but however, Alice and Kay did assure us that she would be here for the December 4th Courage Pro Wrestling. However, in her place, last minute replacement, we had current Impact Wrestling star, the quintessential diva, Giselle Shaw. Taking on Bia Moss for this special attraction match. And I don't know about you guys, though, but these two went to count on. Oh, oh yeah. Man. This was. If. 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 if, if uh, what did I say? Uh, match wasn't match of the night for me. It was this. This was, this, this was, this was yeah, it. Like, yeah. This was it. Those. Between this match and the Charlotte match, you had two. Like, this was just. These two women. Took it to each other. Like. Now, Tyler, I know you're not the biggest fan of Bia Moss. Hey, but, but, you have to admit, though, I, I've said this many times, before. we've seen a lot of Bia's matches. Yes. This match against Giselle, honestly, this was a different Bia. This, this was, was this was probably one of Bia's hard, hardest hitting matches yeah. she's taken off. I mean, she came out to Timber, but by the end, it was more like she should have come out to like a Slipknot song or something. Like she went like that hardcore into it. And 
honestly, for the first time on recorded history, I will give Tia props. She did one hell of a match. And it's recorded. Yes. It's on. Yep, and it's on record. However, as good as Bia was, the quintessential diva came out on. Well, with the help of the ropes. Yes, yes, there was some. I didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't see anything either. But and honestly, to, to everyone else, they may have saw, seen it. I didn't see anything. But I just saw the hand raised by Giselle Shaw. These, these two were uh, too many uh, alcoholic drinks. And... No, that was just me. <laughs> no, that was just Tyler. <laughs> me, I was just a natural. Well, what, did you, what did you expect me to do during a CC Moss match? <laughs> and speaking of. Uh, but uh, oh, yeah. also, one more thing about the Bia Giselle Shaw match. I feel like since. Uh, Bia became, instead of being beautiful Bia, became Bia Moss. She has a bit more aggressiveness to her matches and showed more skill because when she was dressing under beautiful Bia, I said it a hundred times, she felt like the Canadian female John Cena, like the five moves of doom. But ever since she dropped the beautiful Bia gimmick and just became Bia Moss, I think her game has stepped up and I think this is where she needs to go moving forward. I think for me, that match alone killed be uh, Beautiful Bia and started Brutal Bia. Because it was a brutal match. Yeah. Yeah, this is what, yeah, this I, uh, Mark hit. She got flung in the like, chairs yeah. twice. Yeah, but it was like. And it still, still survived. Uh, she yeah. still survived. Most I mean, think Great. of the chairs. The chairs have family. So, yeah. Definitely, I would definitely agree with you guys. If it wasn't for the Oscar Black first okay. round match, this was definitely my pick for match of the night. Yeah. Now, you could have co-main match of the night. Yeah. And then if yeah. it's co-match of the night, then in there you go. It was uh, Shiloh's match and then Bia's match. Yeah. Now, moving on right to the finals. Their finals for the CPW break. Holy Grail All Women's Tournament. Their finalist, CC Moss, taking on Zyla Berry. Now, before we get to the victor, I know Tyler's got plenty to say about this one. Uh, again, I couldn't watch because CC Moss matches are a drink break for me. It's time to go to the bar. So, that's how exciting CC Moss is. Like, I would rather watch Yushi Kid. Um, Ichiwo, the shitty uh, Jays pitcher, than watch a CC Moss match. I'd rather have my back waxed than watch a CC Moss match. I'd rather have each tooth individually yanked from my jaw than watch a CC Moss match. So there's a lot of things I would rather watch than a CC Moss match. I know a dentist too, Isaac Yankum. <laughs> No, oh, I'd rather have uh, Britt Baker. D M T. Hey, babe. It was good. I'm glad that uh, Barry won. Now that I can stop calling her Burberry. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah, so as Brandon mentioned, your brand new and undisputed CPW Women's Champion and winner of the tournament, Zyla Barry. So, yeah, so you know that what, was... You know what? She's new. She's done a lot, and she's proved it. You know? Yep. So, as a champion, we're going to see how... We'll see her run with this title and see what she can do. See if she can step up. If she can step up to the level of, as Bia Moss did against Giselle Shaw... Well, now then, that she's a champion, she's going to have a target on her, pit, on her back. Not only from the women of CPW, but... The women of Ontario are going to be going after her. Yeah. There's a lot, and we know a lot of big names. Yeah, in like, the female, like I said, Jody, like like Jody Threat, like Jody Threat, you know. Jody Threat, Alexi Nicole, Shiloh, yeah. Kayla Rising, and who knows, maybe CPW will bring in some big names. To nope. check, maybe, 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 maybe she faces uh, Giselle Strong. Giselle, yeah. There you go. That I'll see. Hey. Allison K, that would, that would be a good well, one. Lepisto, right who was originally the first woman signed to this uh, card. Mm -hmm. or, but 
couldn't come because of competitions. Or, if you did bring in, I'm gonna go a little old school with this one. Sleazia Sparks. She's making a comeback. She's, yeah, she is making comebacks. Especially this coming Sunday. But that's Taylor Wilde making, is coming through Ontario Indies now. So there are a lot of women. So Zyla Murray, it's time to show us what you got. And show CPW the faith that they put in you, into you by crowning you not only the tournament champion, but the first ever CPW Women's Champion. Lila Berry, you have a lot of competition. We wish you nothing but the best. And I know you're going to be a fighting and defending champion. So take on all challengers. And we know you can step your game up and prove to why you were picked as the first ever CPW Women's Champion. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video here. So make sure to stay tuned for our future videos where we'll have more reviews, previews. We'll let you know about upcoming events. And of course, as I mentioned at the start of the video, we will give you our opinions and thoughts about wrestling as a whole, whether it be Ontario Indie Wrestling or what's currently on weekly television. So for myself, Brandon and Tyler, the Hype Boys are out.